I am having a pseudo interview with Char Robert Charles Wilson. I say pseudo interview because Robert Charles Wilson is a very private author who doesn't give very many interviews. And so he, however, has generously answered several questions that we post to him over email. So myself and Austin Hughes, fellow Robert Charles Wilson fan, are going to read the following questions and answers for you so you can better understand Robert Charles Wilson as a writer. And please note that we are not trying to impersonate him or anything like that, and we did get his permission for reading these. We just want to share these in more of an audio file as opposed to you reading them. So our first question um, that we asked him was, when did you first become interested in science fiction? And uh, he answered that, I was attracted to science fiction at a ridiculously early age, almost as soon as I learned to read. Science fiction wasn't as easy to find 50-something years ago as it is today, but there were a handful of children's books, there were comics, and once in a while there was a movie on TV. Eventually, I discovered the science fiction section in the local library, and by the time I was 10 years old, I was hoarding my allowance money to buy paper books, paperback books from the rotary rack in the local drugstore. So very picturesque. All right, a second question uh, that we posed was, did an, any early studies in the sciences in high school or college influence the direction of your writing? Robert Charles Wilson answered, not directly. Science fascinated me, but I was not drawn to any particular discipline, and my math skills have always been rudimentary at best. As a student, I was deeply curious about science, but I didn't really want to do science. I wanted to write science fiction. I think my goal was to map out enough of science and history that I could write fiction without embarrassing myself. So he's definitely interested in science, but rather than pursuing like an academic career in it, he essentially, I guess, self-taught the things that he needed to and learned from school what he needed to to inform his writing. To be fair, a lot of his books do have really accurate science basis is for them especially physics especially physics yeah just some of the stuff he talks about like especially in spin with like the astrophysics and just the way that things work on other planets seems pretty realistic yeah he doesn't like go through rigorous calculations like someone like andy weir in the martian but mm -hmm. he definitely bases everything on like real pretty plausible physics potential phenomenon yeah, it, it really surprised me reading his work. I could tell that he had done his research, which was really nice. All right, so the next question we asked him was, what writers influenced you the most as you were beginning your writing career? And he answered, mostly the predictable ones. Basically, the writers who reinvented English language science fiction after the Second World War and the generation of writers who followed them in the 1960s. But I'll give a special shout out to H.G. Wells, who laid so much of the foundation for modern science fiction, and to Ray Bradbury, who distilled a kind of thrift shop American poetry from the pulp fiction conventions of his day. Oh, and Stephen King, who isn't science fiction, who isn't a science fiction writer, but whose early work was everywhere about the time I was beginning to break into print. And clearly you can see kind of the influences of like Bradbury and Wells and Stephen King actually in De all of his work. Definitely Bradbury. There's there's some like darker, uh, not in all of his books, but there are definitely like some darker overtones, especially things like Gypsies yeah. that have, uh, you know, multi-world, like really, maybe not dark as much as like gothic, almost um, like uh, Edgar Allan Poe-esque. That is kind of cool. Space meets Edgar Allan Poe. All right. The next question we asked him was that, You've mentioned in previous interviews that one of your goals with your novels is to widen the audience for science fiction. In your opinion, what can people who might not be familiar with the genre gain by reading your work? He answered, At its best, science fiction encourages us to take the long view. The universe is bigger than our place in it and stranger than our conception of it. The past was a very different place than the present. The future will inevitably be very different from the present. Those are what I think of as the greatest meta themes for science fiction. In a sense, science fiction liberates us from the tyranny of the present moment and the boundary of our own mortality. That can be a scary landscape for some people, 
but it's a territory the genre is uniquely equipped to explore. I'm not really concerned at this point about widening the, widening the audience of science fiction. I do worry that we live today in a cultural environment so saturated with science fiction tropes and images that those themes have been blunted by familiarity or downgraded to action plot movie contrivances. That kind of makes sense going into his works because he definitely goes for like really out there, like mind bendy themes. I remember the first time I read Spin and Darwinia, I felt like he broke my brain. When I like <laughs> got to the end of the book. I was like, oh, I've never read something that just I can agree. twisted everything you expected to happen. He is definitely like a master of plot twists, which as a writer is very hard to put in in a way that isn't either like too much or like you're foreshadowing it too much. So I think he has a good balance there. But also like it's really refreshing when you read his work because you don't get the stereotypical science fiction tropes of like Martians or scantily clad alien women or something like lasers that'll shoot people. It's really quite nice. He does stuff very differently. Yeah, and plot twists sometimes, for sure. Like, Darwinia is pretty plot twisty, but also, without any plot twists, he just presents you with some kind of, like, kind of what I mentioned before, like, physics-based, but just a concept that I never in a million years would ever have thought of that is just, like, so interesting. You're like, oh my goodness, like, I don't know how I came up with this. Yeah, and it seems pretty real, Really too. cool. Yeah, exactly. I love that. That's probably what made Spin so popular. I I could see that for sure, because that book has won several awards for a reason. That was the first time, between his works and a bunch of other works, I've been exposed to the idea of like this galactic intelligence, like von Neumann, self-replicating space intelligence, a bunch of times before, but that was the, Spin was the very first time I had ever heard of anything like that. Mm. or been exposed to it and i thought it was like the coolest thing ever i was like oh my goodness like I how have more. i never even thought of something like this true yeah. absolutely he definitely brings in some new stuff which i love so the next question we asked him was how do you feel about how science is communicated to the general public in the media which to be fair Ro let me before we bring in robert charles wilson's answer he isn't a scientist we have to remember that he's a science fiction writer but the reason that I want to put him on this blog is because science fiction is so integral to science communication, and it is one of the main outlets for how people view science. Like when you think of science fiction, you think of Star Trek or Star Wars or even Jurassic Park if you're moving that direction. Science fiction is a gateway drug to actual science. It is. And like I think if you talk to pretty much any scientist, they would tell you oh, I really wanted to get into science because I saw this movie or I read this book. And more, more likely than not, it's either going to be science fiction or a fiction book that has science in it. So I think like having a science fiction writer on this blog is important to talk about this different aspect of science communication, which isn't necessarily factual, but it is something people need or use. Uh, science, reading science fiction got me into my academic science career. So Yeah, absolutely. It's big for a lot of people. So the question, I'll just repeat the question before I go into his answer, is how do you feel about how science is communicated to the general public in the media? And Robert Charles Wilson's answer was anyone genuinely curious about science can find a wealth of material to explore in books or if you're careful about your sources on the internet. In that sense, we're living in a golden age of accessible science communication, but I'm fully aware of and terrified by the wave of anti-intellectualism and science denialism that seems to be cresting at the moment. I don't think it's the job of science fiction writers to communicate science, but our best work has been, at least in part, an imaginative response to the emerging scientific understanding of the world and to possible trajectories of technological progress. The need for that kind of thinking is greater than ever, but whether there's a sustainable market for it is a different and more troubling question. I really actually appreciate this answer and like the fact that he is saying he's not a science communicator. Like, again, I think it, science fiction is really important for science communication, but I wouldn't call him a science communicator. Well, I don't know that he's saying it's not that he isn't one. I think he's saying it's not his job. It's yeah. not a job yeah. of science. Like it's science fiction writers are not setting out with the goal of. I want more people to learn about science. Educating people on science, yeah. like full stop. 
To be fair though, I think the education you can get from science fiction is very important. You learn things like problem solving and, you know, bigger picture stuff and governmental policies and how to be, you know, your own scientist in a way, even though it's more fiction-y. But yeah, I agree. I don't think that it's his responsibility to educate people on science. Or science fiction in general. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, our next question I posed to Robert Charles Wilson, having read all of his works and a huge <laughs> fan. He's my favorite writer and always has been. Um, so the question we posed was, if one were to read all of your works in order, a theme begins to emerge of a concept in a previous novel being delved into at a much deeper level in a subsequent novel. Do seeds of an idea from what you're currently writing typically inspire your next work, or do these commonalities just reflect the concepts that you are most interested in? That's a good question. Uh, and he answered that, I like the idea of that trajectory, but I can't say it was deliberate. There are ideas, questions really, that have interested me since I began writing, and the books inevitably reflect the way that my thinking has evolved over the years. I remain fascinated by the idea of a galactic scale ecology, either of living things or of self-reproducing artificial entities. If such an ecology exists, it might be slow, low-powered, and composed of smaller, even microscopic component parts, and consequently difficult to detect. We wouldn't know how to look for it, and we might not even know if we were a part of it. Which is really cool, and if yeah. you read any of his works, like, really, he expounds on this really well, and kind of, like, you know, picks it up and examines it from all angles in, over the course of a bunch of different books, and you get the sense, after reading a bunch of his works, that there's totally this possibility that out there, there's essentially maybe some kind of, you know, you can call it whatever you want, like a neural network, or some AI. kind of a galactic scale intelligence or ecology or whatever you want to call it that could be spread out over galaxies or you know between different galaxies or at you know the whole universe level and we might not even know that it exists because it's operating on like such a slow time scale that is really cool i think from a biology perspective he does a really good job just describing the ecologies that he builds up on every planet it's like darwinia i felt as a biologist i could really appreciate what he was doing and bringing an early biologist to like explore a planet that had never been explored before. I was like, I'm pretty sure this relates to like earth being explored at the first points. Definitely. And even though he's not a trained scientist, the idea behind this like really big central theme of this like galactic ecology, intelligence, whatever is a hundred percent just based in like natural selection. Absolutely. Like a fundamental emergent property of just chemistry, like the way that the universe is structured. So it's not some like made up crazy thing. It's really almost simple that you like that would be a byproduct of like how the universe is constructed potentially. Yeah, for sure. So for sure. We'll see you in the next ten thousand million years if we're still around <laughs> if somebody's if we, listening to this if we, if we find uh if we find some kind of huge galactic intelligence that's spread out across like the galaxy he'll be right i don't think it'll matter at that point <laughs> if we're still around who if knows? we're still around who knows so our next question for him was you've alluded to your next book in previous interviews titled the cure any word on the progress on this or any other future works and he answered, I don't have a publication date for The Cure, partly because of current events, and my writing has slowed down in the past few years, but I do have a couple of projects in the work. My most recent publication is a story called In the Body of the Sky in the Canadian literary magazine Subterrain, and it has more galactic scale ecology. So we will include the link to that short story in the blog if you want to read it. I'm definitely going to check that out. I haven't checked it out yet. <laughs> So I haven't either, but it, I mean, and I know you were complaining about this before that he hasn't written anything new, but at least he, he admits wasn't it. wasn't complaining. <laughs> but he, it, <laughs> if, if he keeps churning out stuff that is as amazing as everything else he's written, then I guess I have to be patient. That's fair. To be fair, I'm sure it takes a lot of work to like build up and write such a good book about like galactic scale ecology. Or, or whatever. I mean, not everything is about that. No, but actually but really the only a, a pretty small percentage of everything he's written is about that, but... 
Yeah. Every concept he comes up with is pretty like unique and cool. Yeah, probably a lot of work. But I'm glad he admits that he's like, my writing is slowed down. I'm taking more time. I'm like, that's good. That's fair. Yeah. He's, he's written, written a lot a of books. His first yeah. book was in like the 80s. We can look up the first publication date, um, which was in 1986. Yeah. A hidden Place, his first official publication, according to his website. That's a long time. The last question that we posed to him was, did you think your work would have this much impact on the science fiction genre or how people view science fiction in general? And he answered, I don't really know how much impact it has or hasn't had. I'm just happy to have been able to forge a career in the field at a time when it was still possible to eke out a living as a writer of fiction and to find an audience that appreciates what I'm doing, which is honest. Maybe it's not like some kind of blockbustery Stephen King esque like level that he's writing, like the kind True. of books that he has. But like, I mean, anybody spin specifically, I know that's like his famous book that won the Hugo award and everything. But if anybody ever has asked me any one book to read, I've given out probably a dozen copies of Spin, and I can't think of, I can think of it, uh, probably at least half of them have come back like it's their new favorite, favorite book. I think, like, I think you're right. Like, Robert Charles Wilson is such, I, he isn't a blockbuster that anybody on the street will be like, oh yeah, Robert Charles Wilson, of course. But I think if you know the science fiction genre, you're definitely going to find his name. Like, he is big enough in the sci-fi genre yeah. that it's like, if you don't know who Robert Charles Wilson is, you don't know sci-fi. So, yeah. No, I appreciate that, like, he's very humble about he's his work. Very humble about it. Which is wonderful. And, like, he is very private about his life, which I also respect. Because it can be very easy to get caught up in that, especially if you're such an award-winning and popular writer. But I'm very, very glad people still appreciate and read his work.